Well, you want to learn how to crack an egg. Well, this is not the video for you. Is there egg in the title? What are you doing now? Come on now. Hey guys, we're Methods by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at how to create this cool little motion graphic that you see on the screen right now. I'm going to break it down for you. It's super, super simple. It's actually way more easy than you think that it is. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to talk about the, the base of this, which is the white little you know background here now I, I do have two planes in the top and bottom that i'll show you here um in just a momentito these two planes um these two have the holdout shader applied to them so there's just these are just two planes on top of the white these are actually very unnecessary for um anything other than these cubes so what you'll see is if i if i if i take a look at the side view here um you can see we have these little um crosses these crosses are getting uh covered up by these uh i'll move this forward so you can see these these holdout shaders so essentially what the holdout shader does is it makes everything that passes behind it invisible so you can see when when the this cross up here goes out of the view of off of the white you can see it disappears and that's because it goes behind the holdout shader without the holdout shader it will look like this so it would just be you know, it would just go up and, and fade away. So that's the first thing is we have the holdout shader kind of blocking out um, the top and bottom of the white plane that we have. The white plane is literally just a solid white plane. And then the top corner up here, I just uh, grabbed only that vertice and slid it over. So it was uh, slanted like that, which is super, super cool and easy to do. Now, the other cool thing about this is this nice little fluid animation of this little bar that I have here. We can make it thicker, thicker. We can make it thinner. It just looks really, really cool. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually wait, move this like this. All right, cool. So you can see I make it thinner, thicker, thinner you know it, it just looks really cool um all the way big all the way small it looks sweet so um i'm gonna make it small though because i do want to keep it the way that it was nice so the way i did this is i just made a plane and i extended it i extruded it until it was super super long and then i just right clicked and then actually so i did not do that i i went over here to uh loop cut and i added some loop cuts by hitting this little button here and then just put some loop cuts in here uh made a bunch of them obviously like that's a, that's a bunch it's probably like 50 i don't even know how many there's but there's a lot of loop cuts and then what i did was i went to the modifiers tab over here and i added two modifiers the first one i added was a wave modifier which is this bad boy um there um and i just turned uh all of the motion for the x and the y both on and i turned cyclic on so it's uh it, it basically loops is what that means um the fall off is zero height is, is uh, 0 0.065 the width is basically 0.9 round that up there the width is 0.9 um and then the uh super cool thing actually wait does that loop now Okay, yeah, let me put it back because I, I forget all of the values have to be exactly the same or else it won't loop. So I had to get these values exactly perfect or else this 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 little animation won't loop at exactly 233 frames. So the, the hard thing about this is, is that if you want it to loop, um, you can see I've started it at frame 56 and ended it at frame 233. Now, the, the way that I've done this is a super, super tedious way of trying to figure out how to... Uh, what keyframes are the first and keyframes that will make this appear as if it is looping? So what I mean by this is if I put this on frame zero instead of 56, it'll start here. But the problem is, is the end frame ends here. So I needed to find a frame that looked exactly like this on the last frame so that when I went to um, when I went to it, it looked like it would loop. So this frame, which is 56, looks basically just the same as this frame on the end. So I basically just tried to find the first frame that looked exactly like the last frame, and then I made that the first keyframe of the animation, if that made sense. Hopefully it did. So essentially what I'm saying, just to break it down one more time, the beginning of the frame, the beginning of the animation, if I started on frame zero, it doesn't match the end frame. So when I play it, you'll see it looks like it snaps. It doesn't look like it's smooth. It doesn't look like it loops. It looks like it just snaps, like boom. So what I needed to do was I needed to find a keyframe that looked exactly like the end frame, which happened to be frame 56. So when I toggle back and forth between them, you can see that, that you can barely even see a difference. The change is so minimal, you can't even see it essentially moving, which is what we want because it, it looks like it loops now. So when we play this, you can see that it looks as if it 
loops, which is exactly what I need. So this is the big hard thing about this animation here. So I really wanted to break that down. Sorry for a little bit of ex extra over explaining, but uh, I just wanted to make sure I got that across because that is the difficult thing about this motion graphic right here. So um, the next thing we have is the part that covers up the um yellow so it didn't look like it clashed with the words so this little piece that we have here um i can take this or leave this actually i kind of like it without I'm not gonna lie um i think it looks i think it looks fine it looks good so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move that over like that and we don't have to worry about the clashing but if you were have a little piece over there you can see um I, essentially what i did was i just had another holdout shader a white shader oh sorry not a whole a, a white uh square in front of the yellow but behind the text and it made it look like it was um it was just being cut off so essentially what let me go back and show you um so yeah this is just literally just a white plane and it's in front of the yellow but it's behind the text so it looks like it's um not you know clashing with the words um, which is a super easy way to do that um uh, now the other cool part about this is the the crosses but we'll get to that in a second but let's talk about the text real quick the text has a very simple animation on it um it literally just starts and ends in the same place and then on about frame 175, I move it downwards. So hit hover my cursor over top of the um, in the workspace, hit I location, and then just you know move it down G G Z, move it down like that. Um, nice. So it's a super simple animation there. This one is the same exact thing. So the first and last keyframes are the same, and then this one in the middle, but not exactly at the same spot as the other word. Um, it just moves left to right, I believe. Yeah, it moves left to right. So um, there you go. And now the coolest part, the, the piece de resistance is the crosses. So these are really, really cool. So essentially what I did was I made one. I made one cross, animated it. So the first frame you can see here, um, it's kind of like at this angle down here. Then I, I move it up. And I animate it so that the we'll do the we'll talk about the color in a second, but let's just talk about the motion for now. It goes up a little bit, goes up a little bit more. It's rotating this entire time and it's completely rotating. And then it gets to this spot and then it's fully transparent. Um, and then it kind of just slides up like that. The cool thing about this is that I needed to be able to make more than one, and I didn't want to have to reanimate the entire thing. So what I did was you can see we have some um we have some uh we have some what's some call it? Empties. We have some empties here. These empties are the way that I was able to duplicate these all over the place. So I have one over here. I have one down here. Um, I was able to duplicate this more than once without having to worry about changing all of the keyframes, which is very, very tedious and annoying to do. So the way I did this was you can see um, what I did was I made this little cross shape, right? I made this little cross shape, which was just me using a plane. It was literally the easiest way to do this, by the way. I just added a plane and then went to each side, selected the edge of, of that side, hit E. And then just tapped up Y uh, two, so G Y two, and then this one E G X two, or wait, wait, G yeah X two, this one E to extrude G X two, and then hit the negative sign, so you know X oh, G X two negative, and then the same thing went down here E to extrude G to move, and then Y two negative sign and that's literally how i made those it's the easiest way to make a cross ever i promise you that is, is so easy i think i might have did four because it looks kind of long i might have did four instead of two but either way it works the same way um but yeah um after that the 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 empty is what i did so i just added an empty by hitting shift a and i searched for an empty here plain axis move it over so you can see um what i did was i held down shift to like let's let's select this white plane held on shift to select that then i held on shift again to select the empty last and hit control p to set the parent to object which just means that if i move this empty it'll move the plane with it which is what we needed so um this was just a really easy way to be able to move these crosses around without actually moving the object because there was already location keyframes on the cross itself so i couldn't move that unless uh, unless i wanted to reanimate the whole thing um so i just added a, a cross to it and then i just moved the cross around to wherever i wanted to put uh the empty run to wherever i wanted to move the cross so i hit shift d on both the cross hold down shift and select the axis as well i hit shift d duplicated one down here there's one down here that plays um right here and there's also one over here um which is very cool so the the uh material is very simple if I select this and go to the material tab, you can see we have uh, four keyframes here, really technically five. This first one uh, is just solid white. Hover your cursor over top of this box. Hit I to enter the keyframe. Then I moved up a little bit and I made a, a solid black. Hover my cursor over top of that. Hit I once again. 
over here, same thing. I just wanted to keep it black longer, so I, I moved a keyframe over here. It's just still black. It's solid black. I just duplicated this keyframe, hit Shift D, moved it over here. Um, and then this one over here is a white keyframe again. Just grab this one, hit Shift D, moved it over. Um, so essentially what I wanted to uh, do is um, I wanted this to fade in and out from white to black. So it looks like the, they kind of disappear, which is really cool. Super, super simple. Now, the way that I made it so that all the crosses have different animations on color at different times is I had to hit this little button over here on the on the right hand side. There'll be there'll be a little two or three or whatever button over here. It says duplicate it. And then you can go ahead and move each of the keyframes separately. So if I was to duplicate this cross, you can see there's a little two here. But if I play them, you can see that the colors will be the same on both uh, on both of the duplicates for the cross and I don't want that I want to be able to move where the animation is like this one's at the beginning and then this one over here this one is at the end right there and then the animation the color animation for this one is in the middle so the way you can do that is hit that little two button right there um, on this on the right hand side of the material name and then once you do that it'll be a separate material and you can just hit G to move the keyframes wherever you want to move them to which is super super easy to do. If you want to grab just the material keyframes, hit this little drop down on summary and open up plane, whatever one you have selected, and then go to material. And then you can go ahead and move just the color color uh, keyframes instead of moving the um, location ones as well. So there you go. Just a super simple, quick breakdown of this motion graphic that we've made before. I do think, believe we've covered uh, something like this in the past. So I didn't want to go ahead, you know, show everything or, or show too much because we have done something very simpler, similar to this before. So I just want to go ahead and do a nice little quick break down for you guys hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it i will see you in the next one but until then bye bye